What's going on guys? Evan the Dark Souls Enthusiast here, bringing another Dark Souls gameplay commentary on the PlayStation 3. This is likely going to be the last Let's Play for Dark Souls uploaded to the channel, mainly because I already have sort of a pseudo Let's Play on the channel, and people have been requesting a playthrough of New Game Plus, so I figured I'd go ahead and deliver it. Um, this, however, won't be sort of in the format of the other Let's Play, which was I sort of take the parts that I like and cut the parts I don't like. This is just going to be everything. Um, everything I do, all the deaths from beginning to end, all the save loads uh, to kill geckos, all the annoying stuff that comes with Dark Souls. Um, since I finished my first Let's Play, I kind of decided that I wanted more of a um, purist run through the game where you know, I tried to edit out the stuff that just wasn't that fun to watch in the first Let's Play, and now I kind of want to just put the uh, entire ugly truth of Dark Souls on uh, YouTube. And a lot of other people have already done this. Uh, New Game Plus, New Game Plus Plus, just about every playthrough of Dark Souls you can imagine has been uploaded in one way or another. Uh, I thought about doing something really different, like trying to do like an all archer playthrough, which some people requested, or like a parrying dagger playthrough, parry dagger bandit's knife, an all assassin playthrough, an all naked playthrough. Uh, I briefly considered an all fist fighting playthrough, then I realized that would be stupid. But, ultimately I just decided on the fact that since I don't bottomless box glitch these characters, um, it's actually more important that I complete characters so I have a larger variety of characters to show for PvP. So this is, so Ego is going to be my uh, next character I make on the PlayStation 3. He is not going to use any kind of enchant weapons, it's going to be a quality build where I just put points into stats and then use a weapon. Uh, the exact weapon remains to be decided, but the nice thing about a quality build is you actually get the opportunity to use all sorts of different weapons. You could see me cheesing the first boss with a little bit of pyromancy that I carried over from my first playthrough. But the reason I wanted to opt into a quality build was mainly because I've done everything else. I've had buff characters, uh, I've had caster characters, I've had I've had Black King Great Axe character, which is sort of a quality build, but not really, because you just get enough stats just to use the weapon. But also, um, this is going to be a quality build that goes up to 45 dexterity because, for those of you that don't know, there are breakpoints on casting speed. There's a lot of hidden breakpoints in Dark Souls that members of the community have found for us. Um, just so everyone knows, and I don't think there's any question about this, but I never really discovered any breakpoints for myself. Uh, I relied on the community to find the exact numbers for me. Um, so I, did, I do my research. That's sort of my Dark Souls thing. I do my research, but I don't do a lot of personal experimentation. Uh, other than a character builds and things like that. Go ahead and cut down Oscar here because I don't really feel like listening to his speech. And because, you know, it is my opinion that he works for Lord Gwyn and Lord Gwyn is not your friend. So, we're just gonna move on from there. But as I was saying, there's breakpoints on casting speed where every point in the dex increases your casting speed by a very minimal amount. Which it's so little per point it doesn't matter until you start to get significant numbers into dexterity, then you actually notice a difference. And on certain spells it can really sort of change the way they're perceived. Like, one thing I noticed, um, the difference between a regular casting speed like Fire Tempest, which is, you know, the big fire explosion thing for Pyromancy, and in case you're wondering, um, Fire Tempest is the best of those explosions. I know there's numerous different uh, Greater Chaos Storm and Chaos Storm, etc. Fire Tempest is the best for only requiring one slot and creates the most flames for one slot. I don't ever recommend going to the two slot version because you'd be better off just putting two versions of Fire Tempest on your character. But anyway, with that said, um, the difference between a you know 12 dex cast on that and a 45 dex cast is actually significant. And 45 is the breakpoint on the casting speed as far as I can tell. Uh, my research leads me to believe you don't get any additional boost towards your pyromancy cast speed nor your uh, magical cast speed past 45. So I decided dex was going up to 45 which is kind of an awkward choice because in terms of damage scaling dexterity starts to slow down pretty bad at 40 but what can you do? Uh, I guess I'll just kind of dump and waste five points in order to get a mediocre damage increase on my weapon, but get a slightly faster casting speed. I thought about stopping just at 40 and kind of splitting the difference, which honestly probably would have been the better choice, but I figure once you go up to 40, you might as well go 45 just to say you've tried the max caster speed, because 
That's one of the few elements left of Dark Souls and character creation I haven't tinkered with. Um, for the most part on Dark Souls, I've tinkered with just about everything except uh, casting speeds. I've always just kind of gotten the minimum decks to use the weapon on my character, which was normally a very no low number, so I guess it's time to try it with Pyromancy, which I believe will benefit from the faster casting speed the most. Because when I, you know, I visualize sorcery, <coughs> excuse me, typically you wind up with a 10 crystallization catalyst anyway, which halves the number of casts, so it doesn't really become about spamming so much as just firing a couple, like, game ending blasts in your enemy, you know, a couple crystal soul spears, and normally whatever you're shooting at is dead or near dead, unless it's resistant to magic. So, dexterity, I think, where you basically spam great combustion, combustion, and fireballs, you know, and to a degree it is about just at least in my opinion, particularly in the PvP realm, which is where I like to spend a lot of my time for characters, is basically in you know, spamming it. Like, Great Combustion, you kind of just chase people around and fire at them, you know. I'm <clears throat> not getting a big discussion about this. There's skill to using anything. Great Combustion, Combustion, Soul Spears. There, there's a strategy to every spell, but I'm just saying that the faster casting speed on Great Combustion will be phenomenal because sometimes with Great Combustion and people will just start slugfesting you, being able to cast it faster will probably be the difference between defeat and victory. At least that's my theory, and I'm going to test it. Plus, I think that I want to start integrating like AOE spells in my PvP just for the just for the zing, I guess. Cause I really don't think they're great, but I think the zing would be great, uh, at least to watch. So, try to integrate those in for the zing, uh, and we'll see what happens. Of course, <clears throat> to talk about the actual let's play, my path through the game for New Game Plus is very, very different than my path through the game for a regular New Game. For a lot of reasons. One, I just have access to everything I need. I have all my weapons created, and there'll be very little leveling. This character came into, what, New Game Plus at level 99 or something to that effect? Level 96? So, I will have, you know, all the weapons I need. I already have my... I don't have my master weapon for this character, but until I get to about 125, I'll probably be using an elemental weapon until I get enough scaling to make it worth my time. I might use the Black Knight Sword just because I really like it. Not because it's particularly good, so much as I just... I dig it, and it, it scales really well on quality builds like mine. But, some things about New Game Plus that all players are probably already aware of, but should be aware of. Uh, the enemies hit harder, they have more life. Other than that, I haven't noticed any significant changes in the game. Uh, new Game to New Game Plus, in my opinion, is the most substantial jump in difficulty in the game. I would not say New Game Plus is harder than New New Game at all. I would just say that, you know, New Game Plus to New Game Plus Plus just isn't much of a jump. Whereas New Game Plus, or New Game to New Game Plus, is fairly noticeable and significant. Uh, enemies that you might have one-shotted before now take two to three hits, and magic spells slow down. Things are just different. Like those invincibility frames on the roll, where I get stuck on a tombstone and roll in place, but it still doesn't hit me. Gotta love the ninja flip ring. Although, be fair, um, I've seen a lot of PvP videos, and even PvP myself, that people are starting to uh, kind of get over the Darkwood's, Darkwood Grain Ring a bit. I mean, before, 99% of all players I ran into had to, but now I'd say that's probably fallen to a little over three-fourths if I had to assign an arbitrary number to it. You'll see me accidentally taunt with the keypad shortcuts, which happens to me a lot. I think I need to buy a new PlayStation 3 controller, actually, because occasionally my character will just randomly get stuck running in a particular direction. I think that might be because my joystick is screwed up, or maybe there's something else to it. If anybody knows why on my PlayStation 3, like, my character will randomly start running in a direction and not stop, uh, let me know, because it tends to get me killed a lot. Like, I'll just run off a cliff, or I'll be in PvP, and I'll just run right past the guy and get backstabbed. I don't know. But, back to what I was saying about the order in which you play through the game. If you're leveling for PvP, which I 99% of the time do, in fact, it's 100% of the time now, um, you stop at 125, because that's just the understood PvP uh, range for Dark Souls. So, as a result, no matter how much, how many souls you stockpile, you really can't go above 125 if you're hoping to stay in the optimal PvP bracket. Which can make the game get harder, depending on how many new games you go through. Because I have to acknowledge that eventually get pretty tough. Like, I think the game will continually get harder until you're on, like, new game plus seven. Now, I can't really find any good reason to play the same character that long. Uh, I guess if you wanted to take a two minutes to seven and get seven copies of Wrath of Gods or something cheesy like that, but 
all in all, there's probably no good reason to play through the game that many times, unless you just really love the single player that much, in which case I would suggest starting another character instead of just playing the same one over and over and over, particularly if you're going to stop at 125. But I suppose that would be a heck of a challenge, would be to go to 125 and then play through, you know, all seven New Game Pluses without leveling. It would definitely add a, I'd imagine, a huge challenge, because eventually, if you're not scaling your life up and you're not scaling your damage up, the enemies will become significantly more difficult. Because New Game Plus, you already noticed the difference, so New Game Plus 7, it's... I'm sure it would be quite the feat. Um, unfortunately, that will not be appearing on this channel, and with any luck, it won't really appear on anybody's channel, because that's... I don't really don't think that's worth the time. But <clears throat> if someone does do that, I might watch that on YouTube, just to see if it's as bad as I surmise it would be. And by the way, in order to get, like, props for that, you have to actually, like, not bottomless box glitch your items. You have to, um, you know, not bottomless box glitch, like, your Lord Souls and stuff like that, or dupe in order to make it quicker. You need to man up and do it the hard way. But that's enough discussion about the New Game Plus mechanics. You guys can see the difficulty jump yourselves as I play here. And, of course, being in the catacombs, I'm using a divine weapon, and since my faith is, like, eight or something like that. In fact, I think I literally have eight faith. With my faith in the toilet, um, this weapon just does not have any sh chance of two-shutting these skeletons unless I two-hand it, so. Much harder than New Game new game where I could just sort of mash the R2 spin and everything around me would die in one to two hits from it. Now it actually takes uh, some continual hits. But that's no big deal. All in all, this is, this is actually probably still much easier than New Game where you, know, you run the risk of dying a lot just to damage. Like in New Game Plus, I typically play in a very sloppy manner. Uh, I don't block very much. I don't try to parry very much. Um, I don't take advantage of all the things the Dark Souls can give me just because I know that at 50 vitality, my character can take it. You know, you have to be careful on certain bosses, of course, but often it's not hard enough that you really need to go particularly slow. And the early stages of the game are much easier in that. You know, you can one to two shot all enemies and you don't need to go get a Drake sword and all the stuff like that. Um, I don't really enjoy playing through New Game Plus as much as I enjoy playing through New Game, mainly because the leveling ceiling for PvP is at 125, so as I play I kind of hit that ceiling and I really can't put my souls in anything except like consumables, grass, arrows, more arrows, Dragon Slayer arrows, and there's plenty of expensive things to buy for your character, but None of them really fall into the essentials. So I just kind of feel like I'm wasting my time. When I'm playing to level up, I feel like I'm taking my character closer and closer to PvP readiness, whereas a New Game Plus and New Game Plus Plus, because the furthest I've ever gone on a character at 125 is New Game Plus Plus, and then I was like, all right, enough of this. But you start to, I don't know, you just sort of feel like it's all pointless kind of thing. Like, the single player's still enjoyable to play through, but and you know, frankly, I'm getting a little burned out on it just because I've, I've been through Blight Town. Blight Town. I think I calculated this at like well over 20 times at this point. So it's just everything's kind of memorized, and it just kind of shows you how much I love this game and how much replay value you can get out of this game um, if you really want to. Especially because I was trying to level characters on two consoles, and I deleted a bunch of characters, so I didn't know what I was doing. And you know, my first couple, of, like you know, a lot of characters you make on the Souls games probably won't be very good. Um, the community won't have the information it needs to really have sort of a standardized build or, a, you know, what works things. So you wind up with a lot of, like, not optimal characters, which are fine in the early stages of the game when nobody else knows what's optimal either. But as the message boards, game FAQs, uh, IGN, wikis, once the information, the internet starts to populate with all the information you need to really make, a, like, a hardcore successful character, people start to gravitate towards available knowledge and make cookie-cutter characters. And as a result, your non-cookie cutter characters become worse and worse as time goes on. And that's the dynamic in any game that has character creation that has a PvP element. Um, as time goes on, builds will get refined, metas will shift, etc, etc, etc. It's a lot like Magic the Gathering in that, when the new set comes out, the decks that are created are rarely optimal. They're more or less sort of carries over from, carry over from old Magic decks, or well, in any collectible trading card game, I think this is a dynamic. New cards come out, and people start trying to make good decks around them, or integrate them into existing decks. Maybe both, and some cards are not as obvious as some others. Um, I know not everyone on this channel plays Magic the Gathering, but you know, there's plenty of examples of Magic where cards that were 
turned out to be extremely good, went unnoticed for long periods of time, but then eventually finally got noticed and just sort of changed the dynamic of power forever. But that's enough about Magic the Gathering because I don't think a huge part of my subscriber base is actually uh, Magic the Gathering guys. Although if you are, you should check out my all foil Merfolk deck on this channel, that's like my pride and joy of wasted cash. And here we're going to have a save load fail where I'm like, I know, I'll firestorm these guys. Or fire tempest these guys because it's a narrow area and a little sort of a, I guess a trick about fire tempest is the fire won't go in places it can't go. However, it does have a set number of flames that are going to come up, which I don't remember the exact number. But let's say it's 30. I actually don't think it's 30, but let's just say it's 30. And they're gone long before that casts. Total waste. But let's say that there's 30 pillars there. Um, if you do in a wide open area, those pillars will spread out all around you. Whereas if you do in a narrow space, those 30 pillars will appear in that narrow space. So in 2v2, 2v1 situations, like say in the forest, a good trick is to run to the bridge, and if you can draw them into chasing you onto the narrow pathway that is the bridge, or that is the sort of the building after the bridge, whatever. The point is, the fire tempest will hit them with all 30 fire pillars, and you might just get the one shot or the three fourths of their life, things like that, which you won't normally get off a of fire tempest. So, that's definitely something I learned recently that I was pretty glad to discover because it did change the game a lot for me and how I think about those AoE spells because. Previously, I considered them mostly sort of a gimmick, um, particularly in PvP, where opponents would have to be pretty bad to get caught in a Fire Tempest. But now, when I think about it, um, it makes a lot more sense, because if I can take advantage of the terrain, I might be able to get one-shot kills and stuff like that. And also, with the dexterity and faster casting speed, you know, Fire Tempest might become a much more significant part of my PvP. It'll never be a mainstay spell, because the casting time is so long, it's so predictable, particularly when you start clasping giant flame in your hand, but it's still something to consider, and I think that it will definitely start being more frequent on this character, where it'll be much more viable. I don't know the final armor build yet on this character, because I don't know my final weapon, so when you calculate your weight, you know, that's kind of how it works. I also don't know my final stats just yet. Normally I plan them out very meticulously before I even start the character, but on this character I just sort of did my guidelines. You know, I want four attunement slots, which is the maximum number of slots you can get before it starts taking three points into attunement to get an additional spell slot. Uh, since I'm only using Pyromancy, I decided that putting three points into a, uh, into a stat for an attunement slot is not worth it, whereas two definitely is. So as a result, that's kind of where I stopped. I decided I wanted 50 Vitality, because that's sort of the level I'm comfortable with. I don't really like Gouge characters very much, because there's diminishing returns on Vitality. Uh, it's nice to have all that Gouge life, but I just sort of get tired of it. Um, I know I needed 45 dexterity for the break point, and I know I wasn't going to use any support magic because I was going to use all my slots for fire tempests and greater combustions and things like that. So ultimately I decided that that was most of my build, and the leftover points will probably all just get dumped into strength for increasing damage on my weapons. That'll take me up to 125, the PvP range, and I haven't really decided what covenant I'll probably be in. Probably Dark Wraith for ease of you know, convenience and ease of use. Because I don't really want to do Dark Moon because I don't have the faith to take advantage of any of the miracles in it. And the Blue Eye Orb, I have less success using the Blue Eye Orb than I do the Red Eye Orb. So, also I don't really need Souvenirs of Reprisal, however, um, I could definitely benefit from the humanity you get from Dark Wraith invasions. Although, not that humanity is pretty hard to come by in New Game Plus, where you can just go kill baby skeletons and get tons of humanity, but... You know, with that said, probably Dark Wraith, but we'll see. Maybe I'll just join some random covenant, like Grave Lords. I don't know. Of course, Patches is up here. Uh, most people encounter Patches down in the Catacombs due to the level in which you... Uh, do the order in which you play through the game. But since I start here... Which, there, there's a reason for that. I don't think I've actually said why I started in the Catacombs, and I will have to explain Patches. If you come down here before um, the Maiden comes down here, then he'll already be down here, so he won't be in the Tomb of the Giants yet. There's really no advantage to meeting him here, except for the added dialogue, and to watch him turn the bridge on you like a jerk. Which basically ends with him giving you humanity if you tell him you do not forgive him, which I will for the free humanity. But I forgive Patches, because I know he always dies at the end of all my playthroughs, so I can get a free Crescent Axe. 
And that's another thing that makes sort of playing through New Game Plus a little disappointing, is all the items you locate don't really help you very much. Um, all the consumables you need, you'll probably buy. The only thing that I can really think of that you get, uh, you know, multiple playthroughs that are nice, is multiple copies of spells, which are the primary reason most people do it. Uh, some boss weapons if you're using Gwyn Soul, which you're probably not. And I guess I do like um, having the opportunity to get easy slabs, because farming slabs is awful. I'd rather play through the game multiple times than farm slabs. Uh, Ego here didn't luck out. When he went to the Great Hollow, he got zero slabs. Despite having max item discovery, he got zero slabs from the get-go. So normally I get about two on average. You know, lucky characters got like four, but most characters get two. He got zero. Which is kind of tough, because I really didn't need a lot of slabs for this character, but rocking a quality build, I really should carry at least, you know, two slabs, or at least I should have enough slabs to create weapons I might want to use, and since I don't dupe my items, you know, slab availability is pretty important when analyzing character creation. At 45 dexterity, I'll probably want a couple plus 15 weapons, so it's definitely a factor. Probably should have pyromancy this guy, but I didn't. I'm, I've realized my playstyle is very block heavy in PvP and definitely in PvE, so as a result, uh, yeah, I, I'm not as used to like rolling as I should be, and especially with the ninja flipper, you could roll through almost any attack from a regular enemy, but I just I find that I rarely do because I'm so used to blocking. But an un upgraded grass crush shield is not so great for blocking, so definitely something to think about. Uh, normally I try to do like a theme on these commentaries, but since this is the first part of the Let's Play and I'm doing this between homework and visiting with a girlfriend, I really uh, didn't have time to sort of come up with an itinerary of what I want to talk about, so. Just a little post-commentary Dark Souls rant for everyone to enjoy while they watch me battle through the catacombs. I'm not as comfortable doing these Let's Plays as I am doing the PvP. Uh, the length of the videos is often shorter because I try to do my Let's Play clips in 30 minute segments. The big issue is just that it's just not as, I don't think it's dy as dynamic to watch as the PvP, but strangely enough I do get a lot of requests in my inbox for another Let's Play, so I figure you know, give the people what they want. And that's exactly what I'm doing, so... If you're not really into the Let's Play things, you can obviously, uh... Skip these videos and it won't hurt my feelings. In fact, you could skip any of my videos and it wouldn't hurt my feelings, but... If you enjoy them, uh... Feel free to keep watching. This character will go all the way through New Game Plus, and that will be the last Dark Souls Let's Play ever uploaded to this channel. I'm for sure committing to that. Oop, and there's an item I missed. Now, I know you've all been waiting to hear this. Why do I start in the catacombs on New Game Plus? Because I don't have the Lord Vessel yet. So it's not like I can just put on a Sunlight Maggot Helm and grind it out. Like, because once I get to the Tomb of the Giants, you know, for those of you that have never done the game in a weird order, you cannot fight any of the bosses with Lord Souls until you place the Lord Vessel. Because doors will become blocked by, quote unquote, the power of the Great Lord, which is Gwen. Once you place the Lord Vessel, those illusionary walls, those magical seals go away, as most of you have seen the cinematic where you place it and they all go away, etc, etc. Um, that said, that's kind of what I need to... I keep that in mind, but the reason I come here first is I can kill Pinwheel. Uh, only Gravelord Nito's room is actually blocked by Gwen's power prior to placing the Lord Vessel, so I can actually go down to kill Pinwheel, which is a super easy fight, doesn't will require anything beyond a weapon that does a little bit of damage because he's probably the easiest boss in the game. I can go uh, kill Pinwheel early on and then I accidentally taunt again which was kind of appropriate there but <clears throat> excuse me getting the right of kindling from Pinwheel at the start of the game actually lets you reinforce all your bonfires to full way because you probably have the humanity in New Game Plus to do it and there's really no reason not to use that excess humanity and reinforcing all the bonfires up to 20 because if you decide you want to do a third new game plus, having all the extra flask is actually really valuable, and it's very likely you'll get over 99 humanity anyway, and there's really no need for me to carry more than 10. I understand that if I did, I'd have more defense, because you get defense for stacking humanity up to 99, but it's not something I'm particularly interested in doing. Maybe for PvP I like to do it, but not so much for PvE. It's just unnecessary preparation. Plus, if you die twice, which... You know, that could, that could happen, you know, things happen. Um, things just go wrong in this game. Losing 99 humanity would be pretty upsetting to me, so I probably wouldn't want to stack 99 humanity until I was just PvP. So, as you can see, I 
kind of actually near death here from these skeletons and that exploding skull. Bam. But, uh, yeah, as a result, getting the right of kindling so I can reinforce all the bonfires that extra humanity as I go is vastly superior to having to backtrack and hit all these bonfires that I don't really care about. Uh, there's no secret achievement or advantage to kindling every bonfire in the game. So, really, I just sort of kindle the, the main bonfires that are along my path. <clears throat> the only ones I don't kindle are the ones I know that will be reset on another playthrough, such as, you know, the main Firelink Shrine bonfire, uh, the Firekeeper bonfires, because I usually kill Firekeepers. Uh, this playthrough, maybe not, because I don't really need to kill the Firekeepers. I have enough Firekeeper souls to have a maxed out flask without killing any of them this time, so... Maybe I'll kill Lawtrick before he kills the Firekeeper and everything will work out. Now these guys, Tantanite Demons, these guys are one of the harder enemies in the game in my opinion because while they're predictable, they can't instant kill you if you screw up and they have a ton of life to keep battling, so... One of the enemies that kills me probably more than any other, particularly the ones in uh, Sin's Fortress when I forget my, my ring to let me move in the swamp, the rusted iron ring, which I typically carry on me, but every now and again I've stuck it in the item box and realize that I can't kill those guys, I'm too stubborn to go back and get it, so then try to fight them, you know, running slow in the swamp and I get killed. And I like to kill them for that easy demon Tantanite, which you need for a couple items, probably no items this character will need, but it's good to have at least a 10 or so in case you ever need to fully upgrade a weapon, you can. Of course, here's the coffin where you uh, would join the Grave Lord's Covenant, which this character might actually do, but right now I'm not feeling like doing that, so I'm just doing a little shrug. <clears throat> so basically, yeah, that was the point of coming here first, was just to get a rite of kindling so I could reinforce all the significant bonfires. Uh, I find the catacombs to be one of the more boring areas of the game. In fact, I think at this point a lot of the single player areas just feel boring. Um, there's a couple that still get me pretty stoked just because I like the way they look and stuff like that, but I would have to say that this is not one of them. Probably the most annoying areas in the game Come to think of it, are Blight Town's really annoying. Uh, and this is, of course, providing you don't shortcut anything and you actually fight through the hard way. Blight Town's really annoying. Um, New Londo Ruins are really annoying. Tomb of the Giants is pretty annoying. Great Hollow is super annoying. And Crystal Cave is super annoying. So, I guess I do consider a huge portion of the areas in the game pretty boring. And of course, here's the Black Knight. This is the Black Knight that can block drop the coveted Black Knight Great Axe before the kiln, so... I guess this is the one you should equip all your rings and stuff on if you're hoping to get uh, that weapon a drop. I'm not going to use the Black Knight Great Axe on this character. I already have a character that's actually tuned to use it and the full giants. Uh, the ultimate cookie cutter build is actually on this character. Probably the... In another video I talked about easy PvP characters to start training with. Maybe the easiest character of all time to start training with because it'll teach you the weaknesses of your weapons and the advantages is Black Knight Great Axe, um, Full Giant's Armor, Father's Mask. That's a cookie cutter build and it's probably one of the easiest to use so everyone should start there. Uh, I've got videos up of my character using it. I got pretty bored with it but it's it's super strong so everyone should start there. Not everyone should but definitely consider starting there if you're looking for my suggestion for a good starter weapon because that's one of those frequent messages and comments I get. Um, some of you that are new to the channel, I try to respond to as many comments as I can because the community is small enough that I can, you know, I can get those, uh, I can answer a lot of the comments, but I'm kind of reluctant to answer the same comments over and over, and certain things, um, not that I'm going to quantify this, but certain things get asked over and over and over, and eventually I get kind of get tired of asking, particularly stuff that's been answered in the video commentary somewhere, so you know, never hesitate to ask, but if I don't answer, it's probably because the information's already available somewhere on the channel, whether it be in another comment or in a Let's Play, and I just don't have the energy, I guess, to answer everything. Uh, in this run through the catacombs, I will not be visiting the blacksmith because I don't really have any uh, redstones nor a weapon on me I particularly feel like upgrading, so that's just a little FYI about why I'm not going to go see the blacksmith. I will, however, get all the items down here fruitlessly, which is one of the things that's kind of annoying about New Game Plus is there's really not a whole lot of reason to get most of the weapons and items unless you're hoping to make a couple variants of some of Katana's or 
you need a couple extra stacks of weapons to make some of the boss stuff, like you need another katana to make the chaos blade. Things like that. There's just not a good reason to go grab every item. Now I do because A, I like to show where all the items are on my videos, or at least all the items I know of, and B, because I just have like a, a completionist mentality in me where I feel like there's no good reason to leave the item behind, but there's no good reason to pick it up. So given the two options, we might as well pack rat and pick it up. Um, yes, I do kind of follow that mentality in my personal life, but I'm a little more reasonable about it. Uh, plus in real life, there's not a whole lot of stuff laying around that you need to pick up. I don't, I'm not like those people on quarters, I'm just saying that, you know, I like to collect magic cards and I like to collect, you know, odds ends and I tend to not throw away things that are no longer valuable. But I'm getting better about it because my parents are horrible pack rats as well and I don't want to wind up like them, so. Recently I have been getting better about throwing out, you know, things that really aren't going to be practical for me ever. Uh, do they still have value? Yeah, but they're not going to be resellable and they're never really going to be practical for me, so I've just thrown them out. <laughs> when I start talking about my uh, my personal repository of collection, like things I own in my life, you know I'm uh, running out of things to talk about. But in my next uh, part of the Let's Play, I will actually carry on some, um, I'll have a topic of conversation about the game. It's sort of an educational seminar, I guess. Alright guys, thanks for watching, and I hope to see everyone next time. Enjoy the boss fight.